Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're working on the Fantasy Castle on the floating island. In this episode we'll be taking a close look at UV unwrapping and optimising for games and getting our model ready for painting. So here we are in our scene from last time. What I'm going to do is put all of this onto one texture map so it's kind of optimised for games. I will however separate the windows out though. So I'm going to select all the windows. So M to create a new collection and call this windows. The reason I'm doing that is because they've got a reflective material and I just think that's much easier to set up in your game engine rather than having a completely separate map telling the renderer which bits are glossy and which bits are rough. So I'll hide those. I'll come over to my outliner down to windows and hide them and click on something else so they're not selected. And then I'm going to select these objects here. Let's just make sure we've got everything. I'll move these to a new collection as well and I'll call these castle. Now you could unwrap these objects using mark seams and be precise with your texture maps, but I'm going to be a bit lazy and do it the quick way with a smart UV project. But also one thing I do need to do is to apply some of these modifiers, especially the solidify, because that won't be in the unwrap. The easy way to do that is come up to object, convert to mesh from curve. Now if we click on one of our objects, you can see that all the modifiers have been applied and that's the same for all of them. Now I've just noticed that some of these bricks are slightly floating above the castle. So I'll undo what I've just done. And on these ones, I'll increase the thickness of our solidify. That way I know they'll be intersecting. I feel like these ones are sticking out too far. So I'll bring them in just a touch and I'll actually change the shrink wrap where the offset is. So they go in a bit. Now also, if we're optimizing for games, at the moment, our solidify modifier, if I click on the solidify modifier there with my object selected, you can see that there's a only rim here. If I click on that and isolate my object with forward slash on my numpad, we've actually got rid of the back faces and that will help us optimize it for games so we won't have all these extra faces at the back. So I'll press forward slash again on my numpad to come out of isolation mode and I'll select the others and then select this last and then control L modifiers so that they all have the same. Let's go along to this one here. I can't link that modifier because it's got a different shrink wrap. So I'll just go into the solidify and click only rim. I'll do the same for one of these brick sets here. Now, if I zoom in on this object, I've got a slight problem. So you'd think that that would be the thickness and you could pull it out the other way and then it just inverts itself twice, which is a bit tricky to see there, but, but the actual way, if I put it back to where it was, is to flip normals. So the flip normal option there. Now it should be the case if I select these ones as well, all the way down. And those top ones last, so that's the active object. Then control L and link the modifiers. Hopefully we'll get the same thing with the other ones. And yes, it seems to work, that's great. Now there's one more window to tidy up, so I'll quickly do that. So now I believe we're ready to apply our modifiers. So I'll select all the objects again make sure they're all selected, up to object, convert to mesh from curve. Now the modifiers disappeared and we're ready to unwrap our objects. So I'll select everything. I'll go to the UV editing workspace, zoom out of my map here and select everything with A, U to unwrap, smart UV project. Make sure the island margin is about six to give them a bit of space between each other and press okay. So we can see there, there's lots of detail and you can see there's the castle there going down the side here. And that's probably as big as some of the other shapes. So we may have some scale issues. So let's go back into object mode and press control A and scale. Now they've all got uniform scale. Let's try and unwrap again. Into edit mode, select all, U to unwrap and smart UV project. Press okay. Okay, very different this time. So that obviously made sense. And we've got tiny little spaces down here for lots of the bricks and things like that. And then a massive space for the castle. Now you could spend time packing your islands so they move into position. There are add-ons for that, such as UV Packmaster, but that's a bit beyond the scope of the tutorial. So this would be optimized for games. I'm not really too worried about that, so I might separate it onto two maps just to give myself a bit more room. So I'll go back to the previous and I'll do the castle and the turrets on one map. So into edit mode with those, everything selected, U to unwrap, smart UV project. And press okay. So there we go, it's a bit more even. 
There is a big circle at the bottom here. I'm just going to go to this option over here to sync my selection up and go to face mode and see where that face is by pressing full stop or period key when I'm over the viewport. And that is on the bottom here as I suspected. I'll isolate the shape with forward slash so you can see that. I don't really need that base so I can delete it. And then I can select all and unwrap again. And that will just give me a bit more space. Okay, back out of isolation mode and select each of the bricks and the ruse. I might move those to a separate collection so that they're easy to select. Into edit mode, select all, and you can see the space that they're taking up at the moment. U to unwrap, smart UV project, and press OK. So now they're all packed in a bit better. Now the last thing to do before going onto the paint mode is to check that there's no overlap. That can cause huge issues if you're suddenly painting and it comes out on another bit. That means your UVs are overlapping each other. So I'll go up to here to the select, and I'll go to select overlap. And that will show me any shapes that are overlapping each other. So there's a few here on the roof. And this might be a couple of issues. It could be that you've got doubles in places, or it could be a case that the UVs have just messed up slightly. So first of all, I'll just select all and press Alt-M by distance. If you're watching this in the future, in 2.83, the command is now M, and I'll press by distance. And so we haven't got any on top of each other, so we'll have to manually move them around. So I'll go to vertex mode and just make sure they're not overlapping. So I'll go back to select, select overlap, and have a look at the other ones. This is actually easier without the UV link selection on, so I'll turn that off and select all, and then select overlap. And there's a few more around, so let's just check on those. So you just select them and move them out of the way so that they stop overlapping. Okay, so I've done all that. Back into object mode, I'll hide those and select the others. Into edit mode with tab and select overlap, just to check. And there's a few here as well. Okay, so I've managed to clear those problems up, which could have been a real pain. So the last thing is to set these up with some textures. So with my castle base and turrets, ah, so it looks like I've got some bricks selected there as well, and some there, which should have been in the other one. So with my castle selected, I want this to have a new map and a new texture to paint on. So let's go up to the texture painting workspace up the top here. And we've got an unwrap for it now. I'm going to give it a completely new material and call it castle. Now, if your texture painting workspace isn't the same, that's because I brought out a new window by dragging down and changing it to the shader editor. I'll delete that one for now though. So I can actually see my material here. Now I can see that these two have two different materials. So if I go to object mode and click on the actual castle, that's got castle tower and this one has castle. So I'll click on the actual castle and just change that to castle as well. And we'll ignore the castle tower material. So I'll click on the castle change back to texture paint, and then I can add my texture. So when I press the plus sign here and choose base color, it's called castle base color, that's great. And I will change the color to make it slightly less saturated in the middle there. I'll change it to 2048 by 2048. We don't need the alpha and I'll press okay. Now if I go to object mode and click on the other ones, because they share the material with the castle, they too have that base color as well. So now they're ready for painting. So I'll hide these and I'll show my roofs and bricks. I'll select one and change this to roofs and bricks and press enter, select all and make sure they share that material. So control L to link the materials. Now, interestingly, these haven't changed down here. If I click on this and I go to the materials, you can see that that has several materials on that one object. So I'm going to delete the others that aren't roof and brick to make sure that there's no confusion when I start painting. And I've accidentally deleted the wrong one on this one, so I'll just change that to Rubes and Bricks. Okay, so they're all ready. Let's go back to Texture Paint Mode and back to the Active Tool and Workspace Settings. Click a new texture, Rubes and Bricks Base Color, 2048 by 2048, that's all great. Press OK, and that adds the new texture there. So now we should be ready for painting on each of these. If I just go to the paintbrush and start painting, Oh, it looks like that object's not selected. Let's go back to object mode, make sure that object's selected, and then back to texture paint mode. There we go. So very bright, vivid orange there. Okay, so if I click, click on the collection, 
Oh no, and it looks like I left out these four windows. How frustrating. So I have to quickly go through the process again for the roofs and bricks, but I won't bore you with that. However, in an ideal world, we can then texture paint these different things. In order to change between them, we go back to object mode and then choose our next object and then texture paint. And then we can start painting those as well. I'll just undo those changes. Okay, so we're all set up for the texture painting. In the next episode, we'll actually be painting our castle. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.